I'm delighted to see you all here. My name's Ralph Bennett. I'm president of Purple Line Now. We have a wonderful assembly of supporters. We're grateful to all of you for coming. Could I ask those who are going to speak to get behind me so that you all will be in the picture? Congressman Raskin, it's always a pleasure. Yes, yes. Now, we have this morning good news and bad news. Now, let me give you the good news first. You may have heard that there's a reconciliation budget, short-term budget extension that was passed yesterday with the assistance of our congressional delegation, particularly our two wonderful senators. The Purple Line has been included in that budget. Yeah! Fantastic. The bad news is there is only one obstacle remaining to the realization of this project. And that is a judge, a federal district judge. So we are here to try to t communicate to him the urgency with which we would like him to come to a decision to remove the obstacle, the uh, record of decision which he lifted on the 6th of August 2016 so that we can move forward with the project. I don't need to tell you that it is costly to just stay where we are. Maryland cannot afford to finance this state of affairs very much longer. And to sit on a decision for a project which has the support, like what I see in front of me this morning, and is so important to so many Marylanders and has cost so much money up until now, more than $400 million, to risk throwing that away is a gross irresponsibility of public trust. So that's why we were here, and I have a wonderful collection of speakers, starting with Congressman Jamie Raskin, who I think is known to some of you. <laughs> Congressman Raskin. Yeah. Hey, hey. Hello, good morning, Purple Line people. Good morning. In the heart of Silver Spring, at our beautiful library and uh, the beautiful future home of the Purple Line Station. Right here. Um, I, I've been coming to uh, Purple Line rallies and press conferences for 15 years now, and I'm happy to go to Purple Line rallies and press conferences for the next 15 years, but I want to take the Purple Line to get there, okay? Um, we, we need this project to be built. Um, so we're here to announce good news. Uh, the, um, the federal budget was agreed upon yesterday, and we brought back not only $2 billion for NIH, um, but $125 million for the Purple Line. So Congress has made itself clear. We want the Purple Line built. This is a real project. This is a, a critical aspect of infrastructure development in the state of Maryland, right here. Uh, there are workers waiting to work. There are workers waiting to build the Purple Line. Um, so, I, I've got to go down to the hill, and so I appreciate you hearing me early, but I, I just wanted to say, you know, we know that at this point it's in the uh, hands of a distinguished United States District Court judge, Judge Leon. Uh, we don't make fun of judges. Uh, we don't lambast the judges. That's not our style. Um, and, um, but we do ask for all deliberate speed at this point, okay? Uh, that's what we're looking for. Uh, we, we, we want the decision to come quickly. Um, we want the decision about the Purple Line to come quickly so we can get on the Purple Line and start moving rapidly around the region. And uh, the, one day, um, the story of the Purple Line will be written and told. Somebody's gonna write a great book uh, it's a tale of uh, Homeric dimension at this point. It's like the Iliad or the Odyssey. Uh, all of the twists and turns. A lot of the great heroes are here, like Hans Riemer and George Leventhal and uh, Barbara I saw here, Mark Corman, David Moon, uh, the people who are going to build it. Um, the heroes of the Purple Line are here. We're going to make this thing happen. So let's have every branch of government working together to make it happen now.
next, I'd like, I'd like to introduce Ike Leggett, County Executive of Montgomery County. Thank you, thank you so very much. Judge Leon started this process by indicating his rationale in the decision making was because he was concerned about costs, the implications of the long-term impact of ridership, costs, the impact to taxpayers. Well, let me just say very politely, Judge, your delay in making the decision is costing the taxpayers money. Every day, every hour. And so with all deliberate speed, we hope and believe that a decision should come as soon as possible. Look around you today. You hear the sounds of construction all around you. This beautiful library, apartment behind you. We are building here, and we did so in anticipation of the Purple Line being here. Where you are standing right now, is anticipation of the Purple Line. It was planned and designed in such a way to enhance our entire community. There are people here that are waiting today and depending upon this particular line coming to fruition soon. We have the state, the federal government, we have all of our legislators designed to help us move this forward, and we need to do so with delivery speed. I know that it has been a long, long haul for many of us, but we are not about to give up now. Just we're at the point of going forth with a project that would enhance the quality of life of our entire community. We will make this happen. It will happen. And I know that when it happens, We'll all be right back here celebrating, right here in Silver Spring, the Silver Spring Library, the new Purple Line. Let's continue to fight. Thank you. Thank you, Ike. I'd now like to introduce Roger Berliner, who is uh, pre Council President of Montgomery County. Roger. Who is this guy? Who is that guy? Who is that guy? Is that guy? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Look around. Where have you seen such a broad coalition of labor, of business, of transit activists, of environmentalists, local government, state government, and our congressional delegation, all united around this project that will help our environment, help our quality of life, help our economy, help move people. We have new starts. I want to tip my hat to our congressional delegation. People were really not clear we could make this happen. We have a great federal congressional delegation that made it happen. We have everything we need but an order from a federal judge. I want to commend Congressman Raskin. I strongly disagree with this federal judge, but we cannot follow the President Trump model of calling out federal judges. We can say to this federal judge, you have everything you need to make a decision. You've had it now for four plus months. You asked a question, the federal government responded. You asked whether or not Metro's woes will affect ridership. As one who's worked on Metro as hard as anybody, let me assure you, Metro's woes will be fixed in the next several years because of good people like this here at this rally. And the ridership numbers are marginal in terms of Metro's contribution to Purple Line ridership. This is a false red herring issue. And it's now been satisfied. Everybody has done their work. It's time for the federal judge to do his work. Let's get on with this project, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Roger. Well framed. Next, I want to introduce Danielle Glaros, who is vice chair of the Prince George's County Council. 
It's important to remember, though, that although we are in Montgomery County, this project ties together these two counties as no other project has done. And we're delighted to have with us representatives of Prince George's County. Danielle? Just wanted a slight introduction. He just got in a little bit late. This is why we need the purple line. He'll be here on time, right? <laughs> My good friend, County Executive Rashawn Baker from Prince George's County. Thank you, Ike. Good to be here. You're right. I could use the purple line. I could have got here quicker. It is packed on that beltway. Uh, but in, in a very serious sense, and then I want to thank Ike for bringing me up. Uh, although my budget is before the council, so maybe I should await it. Um, this is very important. This is something that County Executive Leggett and the County Council in Montgomery County and the County Council in Prince George's County has been for for the very beginning. It is so important to us that not only have we pressured the state to make this a priority, we put our own money into this line that is really to benefit the entire region. The Purple Line is not just sort of the Purple Line is not just about Prince George's County and Montgomery County. It's about Howard County. It's about Anne Arundel County. It's about Charles County. It's about this region and connecting. It's about our environment. It is about jobs. It is about getting it done. Now that we've said to the state, move ahead, now we got the federal government that's holding us back. We cannot let that happen. This is too important for this state, for this region, for this to happen. That is why we're committed in Prince George's County. That's why we're glad we're working with our good friends from Montgomery County. And that's why we're going to make it happen. Thank you. Right. Council Member Glaros. Thank you, everyone. And like the county executive, I too was stuck in traffic. Uh, one of the Purple Line stops will be out seven minutes from my house, so I could have walked and taken the Purple Line here. Instead, I was in traffic for 45 plus minutes to make it across. So the Purple Line matters, and it matters to all of Prince George's County. It matters to the state of Maryland. It matters to Councilmember Tavares in my districts. Not only did I have the honor of being the vice chair for the county council this year, but between the two of us, we represent the 11 stops in Prince George's County that are on hold because of this delay. We also have the opportunity to make tremendous gains in Prince George's County for our residents, the opportunity to connect them to jobs, to access education, to be able to link our communities of Montgomery and Prince George's County in a way that will only grow the economy of this entire state. And everyone before me has said it incredibly well. Every day that we wait, we cost the taxpayers money. We also cost and lose economic development opportunity along the entire line. We have people who are unemployed who have the opportunity to be working today on this project. So the time is now to deliver it. It's the time to deliver it for our communities. And I hope Judge Leon makes the decision soon because we need the Purple Line now. Yeah. Council Member Tadaris from Prince George's County. Thank you. I represent the densest area in Prince George's County and also one of the most marginalized areas in Prince George's County. The Purple Line would only do us the best job possible to do to build economic development in an area that's direly needed in the Langley Park Long Branch area. We're right on the edge and we represent most foreign born, about 70% foreign born individuals and this is, this is an area that is in dire need of development. Even though it's completely uh, renovated by, by immigrant communities, it also needs an injection of facelifts and the Purple Line would bring that and we really need that help. So I'm really looking forward to it coming. I, we really, we, and we do need the Purple Line now. I just want, that's all I wanted to say, thank you. Thank you, Council Member. As you can gather from the headgear worn by some in the audience, some of the people who are gonna build this project are here with us today. And 
And I'd like to call on De Dennis Desmond, business manager of Local 11 and 657 of the Laborers International Union of North America. Mr. Desmond. Good morning, laborers. Also carpenters, iron workers, and all the distinguished guests here today. Thank you all for coming. Muchas gracias a todo por venir. This project is going to create hundreds upon hundreds of jobs, family supporting jobs, that are going to last four to five years in our area. And the union contractors who've been waiting to build this thing have been very patient. What will the project bring? One, it will bring us health insurance so that when our kids get sick, we can bring them to a private doctor and not the front door of the emergency room. Right. It'll bring us a pension so that when we get older, as we all do, we'll have something to retire on. And it will bring us access to first class, top notch vocational education. Because without that, we will not be competitive in our increasingly globalized economy. So this project isn't just about transporting commuters from one stop to the other. It's also about transporting a workforce into viable family supporting careers. That's why we need the Purple Line. And when do we need it? Now. Purple Line now. Now, we have all kinds of entertainment today. You've provided much of it, and we'll continue to do more. And I have many people to recognize. Uh, when we have finished recognizing those of you who are here, with us, Purple Line Now, this has become a culture. And the Sanders family have been loyal to this project from the beginning. And Greg has arranged for the composition of a song about the Purple Line, which will conclude these proceedings. I'm told that we can take questions from the press if you would like to address them. Martin. The propriety of our requesting his action on the request of the Attorneys General of Maryland and the United States, I think is unquestioned. We have a right to ask to support the Attorneys General in their request, which asked for a decision by last Friday, and we have heard nothing but silence. This propriety is not an issue here. The public welfare is what's at issue here. This is a public good of enormous importance, unprecedented since Metro. Well, as you know, I've been a law professor for about 37 years. And one of the things that all judges and lawyers do is to recognize that you need to issue a decision within a reasonable and in timely fashion. Certainly, the citizens have a right to request and demand that a decision be rendered within a timely fashion. No one has suggested that any form of fashion that you're being discourteous to the federal judge by asking for a reasonable time to decision. And if there's some explanation as to why that is not the case, then I think that he can provide that answer. But it is not wrong to ask a timely decision of a federal judge, no. Thank you, Professor Leggett. And I have one of my students behind me in Rashawn Baker who could confirm that as well. <laughs> and, and I agree 100% with my law professor. It, it is not wrong for us to ask the judge for a timely decision. All the information is in there. It'd be different if there were facts and information that were outstanding. We need it now. This is too important. This is an issue that's been going on for over 30 years. All the information is in there. No, I, I think that's a question you'd have to ask the, the governor. But what, I, what we do know and what we're here saying is there's no outstanding information for the judge to make the decision. It is not wrong of us, it's not wrong of the governor. Uh, to ask that this judge make a decision soon. All that information is in there. There is no new information out there. And so it is incumbent upon us because this has been, like I said, 30 years. 
We have been working through several administrations. We're almost there, and we get this as a roadblock. We need a decision now. It needs to go forward. We need to make sure we get federal funding. And so um, that is what we're asking here. Purple line now. Everything he has asked to be done has taken time. Uh, regarding his standing in requesting an environmental impact statement, I'm going to yield to Professor Leggett on that question. <laughs> Let me just add, I do not believe that there's anything that the judge can do that ultimately would destroy this project. What he can do, if not doing so in a timely fashion, is to force the citizens of the state of Maryland in this region to pay more for this project. This project will be built. That's my determination. This project will be built. The question for us is the time that will be built and the cost of building the project. So that's basically what we're saying at this point in time. And we have asked a decision in a timely fashion. That's all we've asked at this point in time. If another study would simply potentially delay and cost more money. All of those things that we can look at it will go forward. We can still go forward, but it simply will cost us more money to do so. Time and delay will cost money. The project will be built. I am confident of that. The challenge for us is the time it will be built and the cost that will impact the residents of Prince George's Montgomery County and the state of Maryland as a whole. Thank you. If I, if I, if I can just echo, I mean, I think County Executive just said it plainly. And that is what we've seen with these delays is more money that's really coming out of the pocket of Prince George's County, Montgomery County, and we're asking the state to step up. But these, it's going to be built. It's a matter of what are we asking taxpayers to do, not only waiting in traffic, not only environmental in impacts, but actual dollars out of our pockets. That is unconscionable. That's why we need a decision being made, and that's why we need to move forward. Thank you. At this moment, I would like to invite the musician to come forward, KTK. And we'll end the, the press conference, but many of us will be available for conversations afterwards. How's everyone doing? All right. It's a real honor to be closing this out. Yeah, we didn't have a chance to do a mic check before, so. Can people hear that? Okay. <clears throat> There's going to be some uh, crowd participation toward the end, so we're counting on you all. Traffic's been sucked for about three hours, which is plenty of time for me to smell the flowers, but I'd really like to get where I am going. The beltway is running like a clogged up stream, and folks out here, they're getting mean. I'd say it's quite past due to get it flowing. Well, a plan's been percolating for 25 years to help district commuters and dry all our tears. The DC region has so much to gain. Connecting Bethesda over to New Carrollton and taking a swing at congestion and pollution. It can't come soon enough, this light rail train. Yeah, I'm talking about the Purple Line, it's 2017, it's about darn time. So put your hands together for the Purple Line, it's about darn time. Well, one and one is two, and two and two is four, but connecting current transit adds a parts and too much more. Easing life for people east to west. Fighting dated zoning and suburban sprawl, building pleasant communities to benefit all. Old Ralphie's got the plan to make it best. Yeah, I'm talking about the Purple Line, it's 2017, it's about darn time. So put your hands together for the Purple Line, it's about darn time. NIMBYism isn't the answer to our stress, and improving infrastructure is important to address. Increasing affordability throughout the region. We're protecting the crests and trail and limiting the days that you spend stuck in traffic with your hair turning gray. So listen to our voices, we are legion. Yeah, I'm talking about the purple line, it's 2017, it's about darn time. So put your hands together for the purple line, it's about darn 
Talking about the purple line, it's 2017, it's about darn time. So put your hands together for the purple line, it's about darn time. Guys, purple line now. Thank you very much for coming. As an architect, I can tell you the optimism expressed by the building of this library and the form of this library speaks to exactly what County Executive Leggett said. This line will happen, and we will have it now. So in parting, please join me in answering those two questions. What do we want? Purple line. And when do we want it? Now. Thank you for coming. <laughs>